I think there's something within him that always just wants to make his, his damn audience speechless. He does one movie at a time. He's the hardest working man I've ever seen. He's a total chameleon, not an easy one to peg. With his films, you know, it's, it's the meeting of East and West. I wanted to learn from this incredible filmmaker who spoke with such poetry and emotions. In Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon's climactic battle, Ang Lee pits challenger Zhen Yu against the mastery of Michelle Yeoh's warrior, Xu Lian. Yu Xu Lian was really using all the weapons against the Green Destiny. He did a lot of research. And he had all the different kind of martial arts, the different styles of weapons. And he said to me, I want you to use every single weapon there is. Xu Lian's many weapons mirror the multiple film styles in which the resourceful director works. Yeah! That's the one thing I find about Aang. Knowledge is power. And for him to, to know as much as possible uh, was his, his weapon. Ang Lee has crossed borders from Taiwan to Hollywood, using movies to explore cultural taboos. A master at visualizing the inner worlds of his characters, he's tackled everything from Jane Austen novels to Marvel comic books, revealing himself to be a uniquely versatile filmmaker. He doesn't get stuck in any, any genre, and that's what's so inspiring. What an outsider brings is a new way of looking at it. Aang is working in a much subtler fashion, and I think that that's a real quality that he possesses. He goes into these different worlds without any form of judgment. It's always about bringing out a sense of universal truth. Born in Taiwan after his family fled China's civil war, Ang Lee began life as a cultural outsider. He fell in love with the movies as a kid, which disappointed his strict father, a high school principal. At 23, Lee moved to America to pursue acting and ended up studying filmmaking at NYU. This is very much still an Asian director with an Asian sensibility, but was trained in the Western world with Western techniques. Lee spent six years writing scripts while his wife supported the family. Finally, after winning a Taiwanese screenwriting competition, he secured funding for his first film. I saw Pushing Hands when I was 10 years old, and I was very intrigued. The film tells the story of a Tai Chi master who moves to New York to live with his son and American daughter-in-law. That first sequence sums up the themes of what this film is about. You see the old grandfather on one side of the frame, and then you see the daughter-in-law, and they're always in two separate rooms doing very, very culturally different things. It's about you know, intergenerational, intercultural conflict. There has to be something in there in regards to his own personal experience that pushes him to invest in these kinds of stories. His father was quite a traditional Chinese father. I think it affected him. The father figure is, is something which is very influential in his life. Lee returns to a father-son conflict in his second film, The Wedding Banquet. The main character, Wei Tung, fakes a traditional marriage instead of admitting to his father that he's gay. This could easily be a heart-wrenching film, but he has actually added so much humour. The best of comedies are actually the worst of tragedies. As the newlyweds awkwardly kiss, Lee seats Wei Tung's secret boyfriend at the head table to heighten the comic effect. We are laughing at them because we understand their pain. What is the emotions that are hidden? Fighting against tradition, trying to honor tradition, that's very much Ang. In the film's climax, Mr. Gao surprises Wei Tong's boyfriend with a customary Chinese wedding gift. Wei Tong is my son, so you are my son also. Against a moving river that suggests the changing times, Li shows a father figure willing to adapt despite his old world values. Thank you. He is the first. Chinese filmmaker to tackle you know, homosexuality in a Chinese language film. He's always trying to investigate the conflict between tradition and modernity. 
Lee's wedding banquet was a key work of 90s gay cinema, and he returned to Taiwan to shoot the last film in what became known as his Father Knows Best trilogy. Eat, Drink, Man, Woman visualizes the theme of tradition through shots of meticulously prepared cuisine. Eat, Drink, Man, Woman pays real reverence to food and food preparation. The director hired a team of chefs and a food consultant to authentically choreograph the cooking. It's one of the most intricate and beautifully designed sequence in terms of food preparation on screen. Food is used as a metaphor for life, for love, for sex, for family. The film tells the story of a retired chef living with his three adult daughters. At the dinner table, a lot of tension, a lot of conflict comes together. Lee used Chef Chu's failing sense of taste to imply his waning potency as the family patriarch. It grabs you because he, he speaks emotions very subtly. It's not like, you know, highly drama or anything like that. He makes you think. Eat, Drink, Man, Woman was a huge success in Taiwan and an art house hit in the U.S., earning Lee a second straight Best Foreign Language Film nomination at the Oscars. Next, he turned his focus from the Confucian family to British high society. To tackle Jane Austen for your first English language film is really... It's madness. That's Ang. He doesn't conform to one kind of filmmaking. You sit on the edge of your seat wondering, now what are you going to do to me this time? Although unfamiliar with Jane Austen's work, Ang Lee was chosen to direct an adaptation of the British author's classic Sense and Sensibility because of his skill with social satire and family drama. He's able to find a certain truth you know, in those cultures, in those societies, in those periods. But Lee still faced a huge learning curve when it came to communicating with English language actors, including the lead who had also penned the script. Emma Thompson had a really complicated relationship with Aang, and so did Kate, in terms of knowing where they stood. And it gave them anxiety. You're used to having at least a director sort of articulate to you, it's, you're getting it. That wasn't always the case with Aang. Sense and Sensibility tells the story of the Dashwood sisters, who must find husbands to maintain their social standing. Until tomorrow, then. Like in Lee's Chinese films, strict social codes are crucial. And my pocket sonnets are yours, Miss Marianne. And the younger sister is criticized for being too bold with her suitor. But Mr. Willoughby can be in no doubt of your enthusiasm for him. Why should he doubt it? Why should I hide my regard? Georgian society um, is very, very much similar to Chinese society. You know, there's a lot of repression going on. It's a lot about social conduct. The director's elegant balance of emotion and restraint earned Sense and Sensibility seven Academy Award nominations. He revealed himself to be such a genius with no boundaries. He finds a reason and a passion to tell these stories. Lee moved from 1800s England to 1970s America to adapt Rick Moody's novel, The Ice Storm. The big luck ceremony is how Ang starts all of his films. It's this beautiful thing where he puts out a Chinese banquet, there's incense, there's a speech, and the gong is struck, and you start the movie. The film story of two suburban households intertwining emotionally and sexually over a Thanksgiving weekend provided a perfect frame for Lee's fascination with family dynamics. There's like a, a, a major dinner scene in the film and my character kind of stumbles and spills some wine. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no problemo, Mikey, don't worry It's about okay, it. Mikey. We like worked on that physicality very specifically. Lee uses a series of measured gestures and telling looks to craft the subtext of the affair that Kevin Klein's character is having with his neighbor, played by Sigourney Weaver. The art of not offending, the art of maintaining a certain harmony. I think that is something that we see a lot in, in, in his films. I won't take my pants off. I'll touch it, but that's as far as it goes. When Elijah Wood's Mikey experiments sexually with his neighbor Wendy, they're unknowingly mimicking the affair between his mother and her father. Lee uses a Richard Nixon mask to contrast teenage innocence with the creeping hypocrisy of the Watergate era. 
The Ice Storm is obviously very much an adult story. It has a relationship to sexuality that was unlike anything that I'd encountered as an actor. Um, and it really explores a very particular time in American history. The Ice Storm's critical acclaim emboldened Lee to reinvent an Eastern cinematic tradition he'd grown up with, the wuxia martial arts movie. He said to me, I would like to make sense and sensibility with martial arts. And all I remember saying was, when do we start this? Set during the Qing Dynasty, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon features film icons Michelle Yeoh and Chow Yun-Fat as two warriors in pursuit of a stolen sword. When I embarked on the journey with Aang, it was with pure intention of learning from a grandmaster. I remember Aang um, saying to me, Yu Xiu Lian, she's the one that's very grounded. And it reflects in the way we are flying. <laughs> She has to do it off the walls because she's so weighed down by tradition and responsibilities. When Aang described that, immediately you have a real sense of your character. Michelle Yeoh's Xu Lian uses the wall as a weapon, underlining her ties to the material world in this exquisitely choreographed martial arts fight. It was almost like you were watching Western ballet. I come running and chasing the masked figure. I'm up the wall, down the wall. Get down here! Horizontal, sideways, diagonal. And you can see this is all done in one shot. You have got extended long takes. The sense of action isn't created in the cards. It's actually pulling out in full view. Lee had a key collaborator in creating a fighting style infused by power and beauty. He chose the grandmaster of the wuxia martial arts, which is Yun Wuping. He trusted Master Yun tremendously. The reason so many people went to the theaters was because Crouching Tiger was showing us something cinematically that we hadn't seen before. That bamboo forest action sequence, there's no, almost no sound. You're just like listening to the wind, and they're just swaying there. When Master Swordsman Mu Bai duels the young fighter who stole his sword, Li juxtaposes their intergenerational clash against the gentle rhythms of nature. The serenity of that green bamboo forest and these two characters in cream, it was just breathtaking. And it was always about the, the conflict of emotions. The drama was there. As Mu Bai dies in Xu Lian's arms, Li uses tight framing to express the intimacy of the unrequited lovers when they embrace for the first and last time. It was just devastating. When we finished that scene, I could see him across the cave where we were filming, and he was in tears. So I thought, OK, that means we have the shot. The film's mix of action, visual artistry, and guarded emotion kick-started a resurgence of martial arts films in Asia and America. We all saw it together in Cannes, and I was sitting next to Ang, we all went <gasps> And when the audience erupted into applause, it <sniffs> magic. The movie won the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film and positioned Lee as an exciting action director. He's full of surprises because he's so diversified. Amidst a new wave of Marvel superhero franchises like X-Men and Spider-Man, Ang Lee was chosen to helm his biggest project to date, a $137 million film version of The Incredible Hulk. He has taken, you know, the big American superhero and, and made a, a glorious, you know, really deep and thought-provoking art house film. <laughs> Using live action cutouts and splitting his frame into panels, locked down the entire facility immediately. Lee created scenes and transitions that mirrored a comic book aesthetic. Wildstit's sort of this big action adventure. Aang is always looking to get to the core of character, to something that is, is, is a conflict. Don't trust me. Lee injects an unusual psychological dimension into the superhero film when Bruce Banner confronts his mad scientist father. I came here to see my son. My real son. The one inside of you. It was such a dark character study 
of the father-son relationship. It was gritty, it was painful. I think that's the reason why it didn't do well, because, because it was something else. Criticized for cartoonish visual effects, Hulk disappointed at the box office. Lee contemplated retirement until his father saw the film and told him, put on your helmet and keep going. I've always found that with Ang Lee, he tells the story he wants to tell. It's not told for a specific audience. It's told out of the want and the need for him to tell that story. Lee retreated from big budget filmmaking to adapt Annie Prue's short story about two cowboys who develop a relationship while herding sheep over a summer in Wyoming. The reason it ends up shocking viewers is anytime you watch the Western, you think you're watching John Wayne. Brokeback Mountain really mounts him as the master of silence or the master of restraint because so much of that film is told in the silence. The two men are sort of running around prancing, just playing together in a way that two adult men shouldn't be playing. And you can see the boss of one of the cowboys looking stern like he's got what's happening. So he just captures the whole social dynamic of, of, of bigotry, in this case homophobic bigotry, in a way that really pulls you in. What he was capturing was beyond sexual identity. It was about the love between two people. Heath Ledger's Ennis Del Mar struggles with his attraction to cowboy Jack Twist for years, even after starting his own family. A lot of his movies is about the suppression, the repression of emotions. But then there is an explosion. I don't want any trouble from you. You need to shut your slot bucket mouth, you hear me? Decked out in iconic cowboy garb, closeted Ennis defends his family. What about it? You want to lose my half teeth, huh? Not tonight, bud. I sure rather not. Framed by traditional July 4th fireworks, Lee creates a complex image of American masculinity caught between freedom and duty. Getting a lot of these actors, when they're right on the brink of a very exciting point in their career, he creates performances filled with such raw emotion. When Ennis mourns his lover's murder with the same secrecy and restraint that marked their relationship, Lee uses the setting of a closet to illustrate a man trapped by his time and place. He hugs the shirt, because that's all that he's left. The guy's dead, so he just has this shirt, and it just rips you apart. I was weeping at the end. It was such a, such a tragedy. So much love wasted because of people's bigotry. Brokeback Mountain took its place in history, with Ang Lee becoming the first person of color to win an Oscar for Best Director. You're talking about history here. Very proud that he's Asian because more credit needs to be given to, to the Asian filmmakers. The director returned to Asia to shoot the erotic spy thriller Lust Caution, exploring desire and duty through Kama Sutra imagery, which reflects the character's twisted allegiances. Next, Lee circled back to high-tech movie making. You know it's a really good director when he can direct the hell out of a CG tiger. I remember being told that there's three things you don't want to do in cinema. You don't want to film with children, you don't want to film with animals, and you don't want to film on water. In 2012, Ang Lee completed his adaptation of Yan Martel's bestseller, Life of Pi, an allegorical fantasy about a boy named Pi who forms a bond with a tiger named Richard Parker from his family's zoo. So it was the blending of CGI and live action tigers that was phenomenal. When Pi meets the tiger for the first time, Lee exploits realistic CGI to express the danger and mystery represented by Richard Parker. You really have time to look at the whiskers moving, the body expanding and contracting as it breathes. I thought for sure well, that'll be a live tiger. That was CGI. No! And that was amazing because you really, really can't tell. When his family and their zoo animals are killed at sea, Pi is stranded alone in a lifeboat with the tiger. Life of Pi is a road trip you know, across the Pacific. There may be motion through space, there's not necessarily narrative motion. So it's how do you tell a story that in a sense is so static, it becomes a domestic drama. And there's one scene where Pi is sitting on the raft and the tiger is getting hungry. And Pi just says one word. Patience. Aang managed to capture very effectively in a single word, in a single shot, the shifting relationship. I 
think about it, you know, a boy and a tiger on a boat, it could be one minute, the movie would be finished. But he's mesmerizing. Lee's team of visual effects artists crafted a series of hypnotic and immersive 3D images to conjure Pai's spiritual journey of soaring hope and personal tragedy. It was like cinema playing at full blast. You know, it provokes your inner senses. There's something sensual, there's something spiritual. It moves you in, in a deep way that you can't quite explain. Life of Pi grossed over $600 million worldwide and earned Ang Lee a second Academy Award for directing. The filmmaker returned to themes of duty and honor with Billy Lynn's long halftime walk, the story of soldiers returning from Iraq who become part of a Dallas Cowboys halftime show. We began boot camp right away, and they'd asked Ang, how far do you want us to take these guys? And Ang said, if you take a stick and you bend it and you hear that first crack, I want you to take them to that crack, and then I want you to put them back together. What he is concerned about, it's the relationships. It's the human condition. When you look at the world in that way, you could probably make a film anywhere in the world in any language. You get directors who come in who are foreigners who master the, the Hollywood craziness. Um, but few for as long as Ang Lee. To have had the chance to, to work with, with him, for him, to be able to call him a friend is, is very humbling. You don't quite know what he's going to do next, and I think that's terribly exciting and an incredible place to get to as a filmmaker. <laughs> There's a scene in Billy Lynn where two of the characters go off and, and they meet this other character and they go into a back room and they're smoking a joint and they're in uniform and... and um, Military advisor was like, man, I, I, I don't think you should have this. You know, they're in uniform. There's a thing the army would frown upon. And Aang just said, that's just because you don't like weed, Mark. And I think, I think that's, uh, you know, he's a wild child, I guess.